We were filing for last night bankruptcy, Chapter 11, announcing a restructuring plan that includes a $3 billion debt for equity swap. WeWork, once a symbol of corporate innovation, is making headlines again, this time for filing Chapter 11 bankruptcy. At its height, WeWork was a major unicorn and was valued at $47 billion. After receiving billions of dollars in private investment, its aim to go public in 2019 fell apart, leaving investors in disbelief. Yet its founder and ex-CEO, Adam Newman, walked away with hundreds of millions of dollars, even after crashing the system. So how did WeWork rise? What problems caused the fall? And what does its future hold? This is Money Matters. WeWork emerged in 2010 as a groundbreaking venture founded by Adam Newman and Miguel McKelvey. This dynamic duo, having previously crafted the environmentally conscious co-working space Green Desk, redirected their entrepreneurial spirit towards WeWork. The genesis of WeWork involved the strategic sale of Green Desk, with the proceeds fueling the new vision. Essentially, WeWork operated by securing long-term leases for office spaces, transforming them into inviting work environments and subsequently leasing them on short-term rentals. While the concept of office subletting wasn't novel, WeWork injected a fresh perspective. Their spaces transcended the mundane, fostering creativity, collaboration, and an aesthetic appeal, a departure from the conventional 20th century cubicle-laden offices. The allure of flexible rental terms attracted not only individuals and small enterprises, but also big corporations seeking agile workplaces. WeWork's evolution was more than simply office leasing. It positioned itself as a community company, a disruptive force akin to the transformative impact of Uber or Airbnb. Forbes in 2014 crowned WeWork as the fastest growing lessee of office space in New York, poised to claim a similar title nationally. By 2019, WeWork had expanded to dozens of countries, asserting its dominance as Manhattan's largest commercial tenant with a staggering private valuation of $47 billion. The amazement amplified as observers wondered why an office subleasing entity warranted such a valuation. Adam Newman, the visionary behind WeWork, drew parallels with tech giants, justifying the soaring valuation by aligning the company's rapid growth and technological reliance with the behemoths of the tech world. As WeWork marched towards going public, there were whispers of a potential IPO valuation reaching an astronomical $100 billion for this office space innovator. But behind the success were severe hidden issues that led to WeWork's dramatic fall. Just take a look at where the problem started. Despite his ambitious vision, Newman's impulsive nature manifested in decisions that left many bewildered. A surprise ban on meat within the company became a symbol of his unpredictable leadership. Adding to the intrigue, the ban seemed to exempt Newman himself, who was observed indulging in meat even after the prohibition. This impulsive behavior extended to Rebecca Newman, who notably dismissed employees based on subjective impressions of their energy. However, amidst these unconventional corporate dynamics, WeWork's success painted a portrait of extravagance. Adam Newman enjoyed celebrating. He was known for drinking Don Julio 1942 and openly using marijuana. This lifestyle appeared a bit out of place in the usual corporate standards. The trappings of success showed further with Newman's luxurious purchases. Multiple homes, including a $10.5 million Greenwich Village townhouse, a Hamptons retreat, and a sprawling 60-acre estate north of New York City reflected a lifestyle seemingly detached from the conventional corporate realm. Notably, in 2017, he invested $35 million to secure four apartments in the upscale Gramercy Park neighborhood, showcasing a flair for high-end real estate. Not stopping at tangible assets, Newman steered WeWork into the skies with a $60 million Gulfstream jet, facilitating global ventures to destinations like London, Panama, the Dominican Republic, Tokyo, Hong Kong, and Hawaii. 
Interestingly, Newman's successors have since taken steps to divest the company of this high-flying asset. Even Adam Newman's conduct raised eyebrows. Conflicts of interest rose as he trademarked the word we, orchestrated a rebranding to the we company, and charged his own creation $5.9 million for trademark usage. Further details unfolded as Newman used a $500 million personal credit line to secure ownership stakes in buildings leased by WeWork, creating confusion between personal and corporate interest. As the WeWork narrative unfolded, challenges emerged. A labor dispute in 2015 involving office cleaners marked the beginning of internal struggles. In 2016, the company faced a significant layoff, with roughly 1,000 employees affected. The issues deepened in June 2019 when multiple former executives filed lawsuits claiming gender and age discrimination, casting shadows on the company's once impressive path. WeWork's ambitious goal to turn regular offices into co-working spaces needed a lot of money up front and had ongoing challenges to keep things running. The growth first, profits later philosophy reached a pinnacle with losses amounting to $1.9 billion in 2018 and exceeding $2 billion in 2019, equating to losing approximately $5.5 million per day for the entire year. By August 2020, WeWork aimed for profitability in 2021, but this path demanded a drastic workforce reduction of 60%, from 14,000 employees in 2019 to 5,600 in 2020. Private investors, initially tolerant of financial setbacks in pursuit of growth, found their patience tested. Simultaneously, concerns regarding WeWork's business model and Adam Newman's behavior, marked by numerous conflicts of interest, led to skepticism among the general investing public. The consequences were profound. The anticipated IPO faced delays and eventual withdrawal, triggering a series of events that led to Newman stepping down as CEO in September. The company's valuation plummeted from its peak of $47 billion to $3 billion by May 2020. The aftermath of the failed IPO extended into legal battles. SoftBank's $3 billion bailout offer in October 2019 was later withdrawn in April 2020, prompting lawsuits from the WeWork board and Newman himself. The already unstable situation worsened with the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, compelling office employees worldwide to work remotely. In March 2020, WeWork's credit rating dropped from B- to triple C+, dangerously close to default. By April, the company sought rent concessions from landlords, facing a daunting $47 billion in future rent liabilities. Interestingly, this $47 billion, once a valuation pinnacle, now loomed as a liability. The pandemic's enduring impact reshaped things for WeWork. It reduced revenues, coming from fewer tenants per location, and caused a decline in overall tenants, which became a lasting challenge. These serious problems led them to finally file for bankruptcy. Following WeWork's transformation plan in Q4 of 2019, the company achieved a substantial reduction of $2.3 billion in recurring cost. In 2021, it took a significant step by going public through a merger with a special purpose acquisition company named Boex Acquisition Corporation. Despite these milestones, the challenges persisted. The narrative took a turn in 2023 marking another tumultuous chapter for WeWork. In the first half of the year, WeWork witnessed losses surpassing $1 billion, primarily driven by the operational expenses of its offices and other associated costs. In May, CEO Sandeep Mathrani departed from WeWork, leaving the company amidst these financial challenges. As of June, WeWork faced long-term lease obligations totaling $13 billion, according to its second quarter earnings report. While revenue saw a year-over-year -year increase and losses diminished, 
the $844 million in second quarter revenue was nearly eclipsed by the substantial $725 million spent on location operating costs. A worrying sign appeared in August when WeWork issued a going concern warning, raising doubts about its future viability. After this, the company failed to meet the required interest payments in early October. Despite efforts to amend leases and restructure debts, WeWork found itself compelled to file for Chapter 11 protections. This legal process allows the company to continue operating as it undergoes reorganization. The impact is confined to locations in the U.S. and Canada, with WeWork locations globally remaining open. As of the filing, WeWork has 777 locations in 39 countries, with 72% of its space occupied. Besides this, the future path remains uncertain for WeWork and its investors. WeWork recently shared that around 92% of its lenders agreed to turn over their owed money into a share in the company, getting rid of about $3 billion in debt. But WeWork might also use a part of the U.S. bankruptcy rules to get out of some tough leases. It would not be a surprise if SoftBank, a big investor in WeWork, might try to get back as much of its money as it can before the company sinks deeper. Meanwhile, the global commercial property market is expected to see a rough path in 2024. As WeWork's financial struggles persist, lenders are still converting debt into equity. At its peak, mismanagement, controversies, and financial turbulence led to its drastic fall. It's uncertain how WeWork plans to navigate its current situation.